Everybody and welcome to my third instalment of Titfield Month. Yes, it's uh, the month where I am celebrating the release of the Titfield Thunderbolt. It is 70 years old this year. So, this third instalment, I've done a couple of coaches now, a bit of rolling stock, you know. And I've decided you'd want to see a locomotive. Now, of course, I've pre-ordered Lion, so can't do much about that. That's a ready-to-run model being done. But I can do the 14 X. Now, no one's making a new uh, 14XX to celebrate the Titfield Thunderbolt, so your best result is to go to an older model. You could go to Airfix, that's a possibility, or you could do what i done, and I went to the Descent of the Airfix one and went with the Hornby one. Now, this one was probably made around the 1990s, that's a rough guess, and I picked this up for £30. So, yes, most expensive project, but bearing in mind this is a locomotive indeed. And yeah, it's a it's in brilliant condition. It even had its original traction tyres, but since then, uh, they may have been original, but they were quite cracked, so I replaced them. And yeah, overall, it's a nice loco. You can see the chimney's bare metal for some reason, but I do not know why. I've noticed a few double, uh, 14 double X's on eBay like this. But yeah, this was the main engine that ran the Titfield and Mallingford branch line until uh, the, uh, the bus company went and sabotaged the railway and derailed the 14XX and the buffet coach. And uh, through doing that, the railway <laughs> felt like they were going to shut and uh, that was it. Their light railway order would be just automatically gone. And um, luckily that's where they got lying in, etc, etc. But I won't go into that in too much detail. So of course, this 14XX is in GWR green, which is not correct for the film. This needs to go black. So I've bought some satin black spray paint. And uh, the number on this model is 1444. We need 1401. So I have ordered off Light Railway stores some numbers. And that's to go on the smoke box as well as the cab sides. Now, one thing I'd normally do when I repaint a model is remove the branding, like the GWR. But I'm not going to do this on this model because clearly in the film, the 14XX had been painted over that livery and you make out patches where the GWR lettering was. So I'm going to try and do that sort of effect. And I'm going to use a slightly different type of paint over where the GWR stands out a bit. And I shall, you know, make that sort of effect. The numbers I don't need to remove because I'm painting over them. And uh, after the paint's gone over them, I'm putting metal etch plates over them. So they don't really need to be rubbed away. And basically, all I need to do with this model is mask up the buffer beams to the best I can, even though there are numbers on the ends. I'd rather not get them black and have to paint over the black in red. So um, I'm going to paint, still paint them. But, um, you know, it's best to try and get a red base coat, you know. So, yeah, just do a bit of mask work, not much at all. And uh, basically spray this body black. Of course, take the body off the chassis first. And with that, I think that's all I can really say. It's the main loco of the film, uh, the main loco that ran the branch line until it was sabotaged, until Lion took over and took the show. And it saved the Titfield and Mallingford branch line. Let's ignore that in real life this railway no longer exists. So yes, this is it. That's what I'm going to be doing in this episode. I hope you enjoy something a bit different. A locomotive is much better, you know. And um, yeah, so come along, join me repainting my 14 X. So, of course, the first thing I must do is remove the body. This is as simple as putting a screwdriver down the chimney. There's a little screw down there that holds the body on. Uh, unscrew that, and then I just got to unclip the body. And here we go. You can see with a bit of force, the chassis come out. Next up, more disassembly. I was actually surprised how many separately fitted parts this model's made out of. For example, the top of this boiler just comes out. It only hooks in the body. And I found that quite fascinating. There are a few other parts, like in front of the tanks that come out. 
And yeah, it was quite interesting. You can see here I've removed the safety valve bonnet and the probably the whistles, yeah. So yeah, just removing those. Although the safety valve bonnet's going black, I don't want the whistles black. I still want those gleaming. So the next step to do is to mask up the model. Just with a standard bit of masking tape. And there you go, I just masked up any of the black areas because I wanted to keep the original black that was there on the model. This was just to give a different slight tone variant and uh, make it look a little bit more realistic. If you look at a real locomotive, the smoke box area is normally a more matted look. Here we go, I'm spraying the boiler with some uh, satin black paint. And uh, this was quite a nice paint and I just need to add a few thin coats, leave it to be touch dry and then spray it again. And uh, here you can see I'm doing it to the main body now. Now, I was probably a little bit too close in this video, but I wanted to allow space uh, so the camera could film this bit. You can just see me saying goodbye to the GWR logo on the side. And like I said it's earlier, I explained the reason why I'm keeping the GWR instead of removing it before this repainting method. So yeah, the spraying's just hold it and spray. Best to wear gloves, as you can see here. Otherwise, you end up with black fingernails and fingers and all that, and it takes forever to come off. And uh, this is recoat number two. So I've let the paint dry somewhat, and it's time to put another coat on the model. And uh, I believe this was the final coat. I believe it only took two. If not, it took three. And uh, yeah, it came out quite nice. So yeah, I'll just spray that. The inside doesn't matter. I don't mind keeping the inside of a model its original colour because then it sort of tells the story that about it's been repainted. So yeah, just going around the bunker and just along the sides, making sure I've got a good amount of paint on there. Probably too much, to be honest, but it didn't uh, show it off in the final uh, model. And here's all the final painted pieces. And I think it looks quite smart. You can see the front of the tanks there. So I'm just reassembling the model now. So uh, just things like putting that front of the tanks in place, just being careful to put it in the right place. And then I just clipped in the top half of the boiler, which was quite easy, actually. Yeah, again, I was surprised that these sort of areas come apart. Normally on a model, especially of today, it's all just one solid piece, maybe a different cab roof and all that for detail on that but to have the front of the tanks and the boiler separate that was quite interesting next up i was on to getting rid of the numbers on the buffer beam of course i'm going to have a smoke box number plate on this model because it is uh how it was in the film so i need to get rid of the original um 1444 so i just use this uh cocktail stick or sharpened bit of wood with some brass on it and it seems to be quite an effective way of removing numbers and all i got to do is spend admittedly a while doing this and it eventually removes the numbers and uh, I just wipe it away with a bit of tissue and uh, if there's any more left I'll scratch that away and uh, basically keep doing it and uh, I need to redo the rear buffer beam as you can tell but yeah I've just done that and uh, I ended up keeping the buffer beams because I thought it was quite nice. Now here I'm doing something else. I am doing this effect that I kept talking about the GWR on the tanks. This is a different type of paint. This is a form of acrylic paint I've had for a while. And what I'm just doing is I can see the outline of the old lettering, which was what I wanted. And I'm just leaving marks over those letters. Eventually you'll see that I use a cotton bud to sort of smear this paint around because I don't want a thick blob of it. And this was just to give up the effect, as the 14XX looks to be in the film, of had its logo painted over. And as you can see here, I've just got the cotton bud, as I said, and I'm just smearing it around and making it a fairly thin coat because that's all I need and I don't want any brush marks left on the model. That's one of the reasons why I use spray paint, because I do not like getting brush marks on models. So yeah, just doing the little cotton bud job, I think it just helped to finish it off a bit nicer. Now I'm just fitting the brass metal whistles. This 
did take a little while. I had to file the holes a bit bigger, not only just because they were originally a tight fit, but also painters got in that hole. And I thought to make it a bit easier, it was nicer to widen the hole a little bit to just help accommodate um, fitting them in. You can see I just used tweezers for this job. And I wanted to keep these um, brass whistles as they were, not only because I believe they were in the film, if not, they were fairly tarnished. But I actually wanted to have the whistle stand out and it helps break up the black a little bit from the model. Now the whistles are done, it's time to fit the safety valve bonnet, which I also painted black as per the film. Now, I've done the whistles first because if I fitted this safety valve bonnet before, it would have made it much more awkward to fit the whistles. But yeah, you can just see... I'm trying to fit it in. I did get it in place in the end, of course, but you're just seeing the struggle part of it. <laughs> and here we go, I've just done it. And then I decided I'd put the chassis back on the model. So, in a second, here's the nearly finished item. As you can see, the numbers aren't here. Well, I'll explain that in a second. But yes, overall, I think this is looking really nice and smart. So I'm just slowly spinning it in front of the camera so you can get a good view of the model. And you know what? I just I just like it. It does shout the Titfield Thunderbolt really well. And I, I do like that GWR covered effect on the tanks. So here it is, the not finished 14XX. The numbers haven't arrived on time. They were meant to arrive last week, but for some reason they haven't. And uh, I mean, I can't do much about it now. I'm quite tight on to uh, when I've got to upload this video. I'm only days away now, so um, that is a shame. I do think it will make the model look that little bit better, but yet yeah, I just, uh, they haven't arrived for me to put one on the smokebox door and two on the cap sides. But for now, this is the 14XX. I shall show you in the future once it's got its numbers. I'll do Summit Titfield Thunderbolt themed on the channel. And I've got the buffet coach behind it and the tow brake van. And I'm just going to do a little bit of running with it so you can see what it looks like running on and out. But yeah, overall with the project, I'm very pleased with it. I'm going to turn up the controller. It's actually, for an engine of its age, it's quite nice, quiet and smooth. And you can see the Rapido Hunslet in the distance. Right, let's run some trains. So yeah, there we go. I think I shall wrap this video up here. Um, I'll quickly talk about things I like and dislike out of this project i done. Um, I quite like how I've managed to keep the smoke box and running plate, the original black it was. It's uh, different to the uh, satin black I sprayed on the model and it's helped break that up a, a little bit and make it look a little bit more realistic. I was surprised that I could keep the buffer beams, the original paint, because I thought once I'd take the numbers off and I've started spraying the black, I'd end up needing to uh, basically <laughs> repaint them. But no, just uh, get rid of the numbers on them, and that was fine. I was very impressed with the GW and R on the tanks, as you can see. Um, the effect, I don't know if you can actually see through um, the angle you're at at the moment, but you've seen it in the making process that I think it's done a great covering up job. And um, 
I mean, it's just quite nice. One side's a bit better than the other, but still, I think it looks rather neat. One thing I don't like, really, is paint. Um, I use satin black, and I think maybe I should have gone for a more matte paint. I don't know. Um, I'm just thinking, when you look at the film, uh, the engine's very weathered anyway, so maybe having this model weathered might um, have a good effect. Comment down below if you think that is a good idea. And I think the model will look better when it's got the numbers on it, but uh, we will not know for a little bit. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, give a thumbs up. Comment down below what did you think of this project. Personally, this is one of my favourite projects out of the three I've done. Um, share this video with your friends. Shang is caring and helps get the channel out there. And uh, send it to a friend who you think uh, like would like this uh project or someone who likes the Titfield Thunderbolt and uh, please consider subscribing it really helps the channel helps the channel grow brilliantly and I'm very happy with how the channel's growing at the moment so yeah please do click that subscribe button and if you do click on that bell you will get notified of every video that comes out by me so that's it for now uh, take care and I shall see you next time cheerio for now